we're going to need the motor and the motor mount the pre-bent stuffing tube I have a piece of 3 16 rod round and deep bird on each end That's almost all the material we'll need. Lastly is this 932nd brass tube, 14 valve wall. And 732nd aluminum tubing. Just stuff I had laying around. Show you how all this will come together in a bit here. These are spacers, just cut them about so long. I'm building a stack and the purpose of this stack is going to be to align my stuffing tube to the motor when I epoxy the stuffing tube into the tub. So deburring these spacers here. I'll show you how this stack works. So here's the piece of 316 rod that's going to go in the uh, motor collet. This piece of aluminum, the 732nd aluminum, spaces this out to the pre bent quarter inch stuffing tube. And then this size fits over the quarter inch stuffing tube. That's the 932nd 14th out wall brass tube. So I'll cut a piece of this. I have this built in the stack right now to, for alignment purposes. I'll cut a piece of this and this will get epoxied into the tub. This piece of shaft will go in the motor collet. The aluminum will align the stuffing tube. And then the piece that I'm going to cut that's going to get epoxy into the tub fits over the stuffing tube. So that stack is going to give me perfect alignment. My motor collet to the stuffing tube inside the short piece of tube that gets epoxy into the tub. Off camera, I have everything mocked up for fitting my stuffing tube, the bottom ski, and the alignment of the motor, the motor coupling to the stuffing tube. I also have on the stack the piece of brass tubing that's going to get epoxied into the tub. I cut this piece to go on the stack, but I won't need it in this build. This piece I would put on the stack, align my motor up, and use this to locate where to cut the hole through the tub. It already has a laser cut hole in the tub. I've centered the motor in the tub and marked it. 
I had to open up the hole in the former and the slot in the tub. This brass tubing is slightly larger than the quarter inch tubing, that prevent piece of quarter inch tubing. Laser cut um, slots and holes are so precise. So motor's on center, that hole and that slot is on center. I took an equal amount off both sides. Here is that piece of outer tubing that will get epoxied into the hull. So with this system, I'll drill a small hole in this outer brass tube that's epoxied into the hull. And this stuffing tube right here will be retained with a small dab of solder in that hole. I've mocked this up, setting the tub on these blocks of wood. And I've shimmed the bottom plate up underneath the far side of the ski, the side plate for the ski, and adjusted, made the final adjustment on the bend on the stuffing tube. Now I know everything will fit. It's actually a fairly snug fit in there. And if I ever damage this um, stuffing tube, I can just unsolder that dot of solder on the inside, that piece that's epoxy in the tub, replace the stuffing box. So why all the bother with this mock-up? I was getting ready to Loctite the side screws in this motor mount and using this short piece of um, tubing in that stack, I line it up with a laser cut slot and epoxy it in the tub. Turns out once I started fitting things, this is kind of tighter than I expected to fit the um, stuffing tube in that ski that you build on the bottom of the tub. And I had to lower this angle slightly. I was getting 18 degrees, just trying to imitate this angle of the stock motor mount. It's down closer to 17 degrees. So good thing I didn't lock tight them in them screws in and epoxy this in place. It would have been quite a chore trying to adjust that angle and getting everything to fit nice and straight, everything aligned up in that stack. Now I can epoxy the motor mount in place with this stack set up, epoxy this piece of tube, and then pull the motor, pull the stuffing tube, and seal the hole inside the tub. This might seem like a bit much doing all this mock-up, but I saw pretty quickly when I was getting ready to epoxy this motor mount in so I could seal the inside of the tub that I had to look at some things here. That's just how I like to build. I'm not guessing here, not paint myself in a corner. And I think with all this set up and the alignment that I got here, I'll end up with a better result. I should mention with the quarter inch diameter OD stuffing tube, I'll be running a 3 16 flex cable with this setup with no Teflon liner. Going with the Speedmaster 21 strut with their brass bushing with the grease holes that is free to rotate inside the um, stuffing tube. And the very end of this is supported and is rotating inside the um, strut. What this setup does is the bushing against the stuffing tube and the bushing against the flex cable is seeing half the RPM as far as wear goes when it can freely rotate like that. It's a good system. I have it in my other riggers with zero issues. So that fits in the quarter inch OD stuffing tube. Speedmaster strut fits the OD, supports it, and this is 
long right now, the stuffing tube, so I have to shorten it, get the right length to mount the strut to the transom. You could also run a 150 thou diameter flex cable with a Teflon liner in this same quarter inch diameter OD stuffing tube. I personally like the larger 316 diameter flex cable and I've had zero issues, wear issues in the stuffing tube, but also with this setup, I've already mentioned it, but with this short piece of tubing that's epoxied into the tub, you could replace the stuffing tube without having to cut out the epoxy. But I've been running it for a couple years now in my other riggers, keep it lubricated. I've had no wear on the bushing, the strut, or the stuffing tube where I've not had to replace anything on it. So excellent system. I've had zero issues running this on my riggers.